Aging and Disease Prevention Radio is right here on Radio MD. Here's author, blogger, lecturer, and national medical media personality, Dr. Michael Smith, MD, with Healthy Talk. So, you know, it's no secret that African Americans top the list of groups afflicted by high blood pressure, stroke, diabetes, heart disease, kidney failure, and cancer greater than most groups. You know, as an African American physician, Dr. Richard Walker has studied these conditions among his patients for many, many years, and he's author of African American Healthy. And he's with me today to discuss the diseases that are so devastating to African Americans and why that is the case. Dr. Walker, welcome to the show. Well, thank you for having me on, and uh, I really appreciate uh, the opportunity to talk about a subject that's absolutely devastating to uh, the African American family, but not only to the African American family, but to any family. But in particular, right. the extent of the disease that we see for the African American family is uh, really over the top, and that's what really got me interested. Well, th- that's an interesting part. When did you actually get really into this, and or when did you realize that this that the African American population was was at the highest risk risk for developing some of these diseases? Well, uh, the uh, the epiphany really came as I started to transition from uh, doing uh, traditional medicine to looking into functional or integrated medicine, and I began to see that there's a preponderance of uh, disease in the African-American community along with uh, its collateral damage. But uh, becoming cognizant of of the uh, kind of diseases really occurred when I was uh, when I was a kid. When I was growing up, I, I mean, it was commonplace for me to hear. Well, my mother's uh, my mother's in the hospital because of diabetes, or my father has hypertension, or there's renal failure, and everyone believed that um, this was uh, was a norm. It was just part of uh, uh, growing old and. There really was no uh, exception that we understood that this did not have to be. So, I, I, I mean, as far back as I can remember, I, uh, I recall people talking about this. But it was only until I started to make that, that professional transition when I began to realize, you know, all these diseases that we talk about in the African-American community, these are not, we are not, destined to have these diseases. This is not our legacy. This is part of a lifestyle, and it is therefore not genetic, and we don't have to have it. Well, I, I want to get into that. I, I do want to ask the question, why do we see these age-related diseases really affecting the African-American population? But before we go there, uh, Dr. Walker, in your book, it's page six and seven. Again, the book is titled, uh, titled African-American Healthy by Dr. Richard Walker, and on page 6 and 7, you have some interesting graphs. You have uh, heart disease, end-stage kidney disease, stroke, breast cancer, prostate cancer, blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, and you give the incidence per 100,000 people, and you're comparing whites to blacks, and the numbers are just, it's incredible. I mean, look at end-stage kidney disease. Out of 100,000 people, you're talking about almost 44 black people versus 8 white people. I mean, that's, that's, that's a big, big difference. Why is that? Why are we? What's going on? What is the physiology different? I mean, you mentioned you mentioned lifestyle. Is that really all it is? What do you think is driving these differences? Well, I, I think it's uh, all of the above. It's, it's, it's not just lifestyle. There is a genetic component. Uh, there's a nutritional component. Uh, so it's it's multifactorial, and uh, it's very difficult to say it's just one thing, but. I think that if you had to say, if you had to do a couple of things in order to make a transition, where would you put the money? And I would put the money on the very things that, uh, that you discuss on your program, and that is about lifestyle changes in terms of what we eat and, uh, and things that we can do in order to supplement what our body, what our body does and does normally. So if we can do those kinds of things, uh, we can make a dent in the majority of the problems that we're seeing in the African uh, American community. 
So having said that, I would say one of the biggest problems that we have in the African American uh, community is that we don't uh, eat well. Of course, I'm generalizing, but we don't eat well. And when I say we don't eat well, if you take the preponderance of African Americans in the communities that we're in, there are food deserts. And what I mean by that is that um, if you go, uh, let's say, like into uh, an inner city, you will rarely find a uh, large supermarket that have a lot of uh, produce, that has, has a big produce section uh, of, of fruits and vegetables are, are uh, infrequently consumed. And the kind of foods that we do eat, if you go to the mom and pop shops uh, that are in the, the neighborhoods, uh, more likely than not, the kind of foods that they have in the mom and pop shops shop are not going to be the best quality foods. Many of those foods have, are high in pesticides and herbicides and a lot of contaminants. So, um, number one, not eating the right foods. Number two, not eating the best of the right foods. And number three, the foods that we that, that are eaten are the foods that have the lowest quality. And that begins to add up from birth. It makes me want to ask a question, though, because when you look at the overall adult population in this country and you put all races together, none of us are really eating all that well. And we know that's having a, a huge and as diabetes is just rampant in, in all cultures and in all races in this country. But when you look at the numbers that you present in your book, um, these these differences are pretty staggering. Is, is, is that food then, is that bad food, that low quality food, the, is the, the pesticides, uh, you know, all that, all that artificial stuff that we put in food, is that, I guess, is, is it having a greater effect in an African American than say a white person? Because when I look at those numbers, there must be something else driving some of this. Well, uh, let's take end-stage renal disease, for example. In end-stage renal disease, one of the major factors uh, about that particular disease is that um, there is a lot more scarring that occurs in the renal parenchyma or the renal cells secondary to hypertension. And um, uh, without the uh, a, a, a high level of vitamin D3, that scarring um, is one of the major reasons why there's so much more uh, uh, disease in, in the kidney in African Americans than you find in other populations. So in that particular disease, it's a combination of genetics as well as nutrition and environment. And, of course, as we're talking about uh, end-stage renal disease, the primary cause of that in so many patients, regardless of whether they're African-American or not, is secondary to hypertension. And that opens up uh, a door, and we can probably have uh, a huge discussion on just hypertension alone. But hypertension right. is, the, uh, is the door that opens, um, that opens allowing for damage to the renal parenchyma and then when you add on the four food choices, it's just a multifactorial uh, reason. Well, and we're going to talk in the next segment, Dr. Walker. We'll, we're definitely going to go into what we can do about this. And we only have about 30 seconds left. So what are most African Americans aware of this problem that they have with these age-related diseases? That's why I wrote the book. The answer is no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> most I'm most, glad you did. <laughs> yeah, most uh, people in the African-American community still believe that um, that our legacy is that uh, when we get to 35, 40, 45, we are going to right. get these chronic diseases, and that's just not true. Yeah, let's, let's hold that thought. We come back, we'll go into this a little bit more and what we can do about it. This is Healthy Talk on Radio MD. I'm Dr. Mike. Stay well. <laughs> 